Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option channel for the UPSC examination. In today's video, we are going to see the very interesting concept in a plant morphology that is perian. This perian can be found in an angiospermic flower, alright, and this perian is again very useful in constructing the floral formulas, alright. So let's begin. So first of all, what are what is perian and what are the general characteristics of this perian? Now in some plants, calyx and corolla are morphologically similar and together they are called as the perian. That is, in some plants, the calyx, that is the outer whorl, and the corolla, that is the inner whorl, both are morphologically similar. And together, these morphologically similar calyx and corolla are called as perian. Now in the picture, you can clearly see the outer whorl is the calyx, right? While the inner whorls are corolla, but although they are the different whorls of a flower, they are morphologically very similar and you cannot distinguish between the which one is the calyx and which one is the corolla. So these morphologically similar calyx and corolla together called perian. Now perian forms the involute and surrounding the sexual organs of flower and consisting of calyx and corolla. The perian forms the involute around the sexual organs. As you can see in the picture, in the middle we have here sexual organ that is the androsium and the gynosium and both these sexual organs are enclosed by the perian that is the calyx and corolla. Now this perian is non-reproductive part of the flower. As you know perian is made up of calyx and corolla. Now both these organs are the accessory whorls of an flower and that is why they do not take direct part in the reproduction of the plants. Now individual members in the perianth are called as the tepals. It is very similar as the individual members of the calyx are called as the sepals while the individual members of the corolla are called as petals. In the similar way the individual members of the perianth are called as tepals. Alright. Now let us see about polyphylus and the gamophylus perian. When the tepals are free from one another, such a perian is called polyphylus perian. The example is gloriosa. You can see in the picture the perian, that is the individual members of the perian, that is the tepals are free from each other. In such a case, such a type of perian is called as polyphylus perian. And when tepals are fused with one another, it is called as gamophilus perianth. The example is euphorbia. You can see in the picture, the tepals are fused with each other. In such a case, the perianth is called the gamophilus perianth. So in a polyphylus perianth, we have free tepals and the gamophilus perianth, we have fused tepals. Now let us see about sepaloid perianth and the petaloid perianth. When the tepals in the perianth are green in color, such a perianth are called the sepaloid perianth. When the color of a perianth is green, such a type of perianth is called as the sepaloid perianth. And when the tepals are brightly colored, such a perianth are called as the petaloid perianth. The example for the sepaloid perianth is grevia, and example for the petaloid perianth is a gloriosa. You can clearly observe in a gloriosa there is a brightly colored tepals. So it is called the petaloid perian. And in engravia you will find the green color perian. Such a perian is called the sepaloid perian. Again it is very important to note here that if the color of sepals matches with the color of petals, then such a type of perian is called as the sepaloid perian. And in a similar way, when the color of petals matches with the color of sepals, in such a case, the perianth is called as the petaloid perian. That is, if the sepal color is like the color of petals, then such a type of perian is called as petaloid perian. And if the color of a petals matches with the color of sepals, it is called as the sepaloid perian. All right. Now let us see the types of perian. In general, perian can be classified into Chlamydias perianth and the Chlamydias perianth. 
Chlamydia perianth is simply means the presence of perianth. That is, perianth is present. While a chlamydia perianth means absence of perianth. All right. If the perianth is absent, it is called as the chlamydia perianth. And if the perianth is present, it is called as the chlamydia perianth. Now, this chlamydia perianth is again are of two types. First is monochlamydia perianth, and second diclamydia perianth. In a monochlamydia perianth, we have only one whorl that is presence of calyx or corona. That is only one is present on the flower. That is only the calyx or only the corolla. Such a type of perianth is called as the monochlamydia perianth. On the other hand, we have diclamydia perianth in which calyx plus corolla both are present. That is the presence of both calyx and corolla makes the diclamydia perianth. All right. So in a monochlamydia perianth, either calyx or corolla is present, and in a diclamydia perianth, both calyx and corolla are present. Now this diclamydia perianth may be of two types. That is the homochlamydia perianth and heteroclamydia perianth. The homochlamydia perianth is the one in which calyx and corolla are not distinguishable. That is in a perianth, we cannot distinguish between calyx and corolla clearly. But in heteroclamydia perianth, we can clearly distinguish between the calyx and corolla. That is, separate structures of the calyx and corolla are present in heteroclamydia perianth, while all the similar calyx and corolla are present in the homochlamydia perianth. All right. So, in a types, we have seen the perianth are of two types. That is the chlamydia perianth and the acclamydia perianth. Chlamydia perianth is again of two types. That is the monochlamydia perianth and the diclamydia perianth. Diclamydia perianth is again of two types. That is the homochlamydia perianth and the heteroclamydia perianth. So, as a fun part of homework, you will have to find the example for each category. That is for the chlamydia perianth, then acclamydia perianth, then monochlamydia perianth and diclamydia perianth, and then homochlamydia perianth and the heteroclamydia perianth. And if you find the example, please mention this example in a comment box. All right, so that all will get the examples for all these types of the period. Now let us see what are the functions of the period. First function. Now while we are discussing about the function of an period, you should know that is the combination of calyx and corolla together forms the period. So the function which are performed by the calyx as well as by the corolla. Are also performed by the perian. All right. So very similar functions of the calyx and corolla are given to the perian as well. Now first is the attracting the pollinators. Being brightly colored, petaloid perian attracts the pollinator for the pollination purpose. That is, if the perian is a petaloid perian, then it is brightly colored and it attracts the pollinators for the pollination purpose. The second function. Of an perianth is to storage of nectar. Now, in a gamophilus flower, where the tepals are fused with each other, the lower part of such a perianth it acts as a storehouse for storing the nectar. Now, third function is the protection. That is, in a bud condition, the petals and the sepals protect the inner essential organs, that is, the stamens and carpels. Now, these are petals and sepals together constitute the perianth, and this perianth. Will enclose or say will protect the stamens and carpels. That is the essential sexual organs. And the fourth function performed by the perianth is a photosynthesis. That is being cephaloid perianth. That is the if perianth is in green in color, it can produce food by the process of photosynthesis. That is the cephaloid perianth is always green in color. And if in green in color there is a presence of chlorophyll pigment, this chlorophyll pigment is responsible for the process of photosynthesis in which. Food is prepared by the plants. All right. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please like the video. If you have any doubt or question about the video, please make a comment in a comment box so that we can discuss all all the issues in the comment box. Please share this video with your friends who are studying the botany subject, and please subscribe to the botany optional channel for the UPSC examination. Again. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next video.